How wonderful to be back inside Holy Trinity, broadcasting to you on this sixth Sunday of Trinity. So that was uh, a brief welcome from inside the church, and uh, you find yourself back with me in the vicarage study. And the reality is, for the next um, few weeks, we'll be chopping and uh, changing uh, bits of the video uh, in order that we will have more of the church uh, appearing. The reality is we're going to have a bit of a patchwork uh, presented, but that should just add for interest. You'll be able to look at me and think, well, he's had his hair cut there, and well, he's changed his shirt, why is that? And uh, that's because we are doing this mix and match. Um, but as we journey together, let's start our act of worship by singing together this very first hymn, He Who Would Valiant Be Against All Disaster. We now move into our reading for today, uh, which is again taken from uh, a home environment, this time in the home of Zach, who lives in the middle of uh, High Street. And the, uh, the really um, encouraging thing is that he's persevered with this reading because living in the middle of the High Street, there's been numerous background noises. So this is about the seventh attempt and it's the cleanest version we can get without any interruptions. So thank you in advance, Zach. And it's taken from Genesis chapter 28, verse 10 to 19. Jacob left Beersheba and went towards Haran. He came to a certain place and stayed there for the night. Because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones of the place, he put it under his head and laid down in that place. And he dreamed there was a ladder set upon the earth, the top of it reaching to heaven, and the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. And the Lord stood beside him and said, I am the Lord, the God of Abraham, your father and the God of Isaac, the land on which you lie I will give to you and your offspring. And your offspring shall be like the dust of the earth, and you shall spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and all the families of the earth shall be blessed, in you and in your offspring. Know that I am with you, and will keep you wherever you go, and will bring you back to this land, for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. 
Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in his place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So Jacob rose early in the morning, and he took the stone that he had put under his head, and set it up for a pillar, and poured oil on the top of it. He called that place Bethel, but the name of the city was Luz at the first. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Zach. Um, now we go back to the church where I can formally welcome our visiting preacher for today. I'd like to introduce our visiting preacher this morning. He's somebody that you will know extremely well. His name is James Butler, and as we said earlier in one of our online services, he will shortly be going off to Theological College at Westcott in Cambridge. Now, James has been with us for about eight years, and he's been an excellent tenor in the choir for us. He's been absolutely fantastic in putting in huge amounts of effort, moving furniture around the church when it's needed, decorating and sorting out uh, the vestry. He's also uh, been instrumental in making sure that those beautiful service sheets are meticulously printed and in order. Uh, he's been with us on the PCC. He's done some really imaginative and sterling work at our local school. So much so that I know that Vicky, our head teacher, is immediately thinking how on earth is she going to replace James? Well, look, I could go on, and I will go on, James, when we're all back in church, because we want to give you a big gift to say how much and how grateful we are to you. Now, when you first uh, started here and started thinking about becoming a priest, I invited you to preach a sermon and it was exceptional. Uh, and I said there and then, look, you need to explore about becoming a priest, and the other thing that you need to do is you need to be free from having any responsibilities with us as a congregation. Go off and explore your vocation with other churches. And you've done that, you've done that with St Albans, and you've also done that with Stone, uh, particularly with the social work. I'm really delighted, and all of us are chuffed that you're going forward. So that's a huge lead up uh, in your sermon for today. Um, but, but James, from the bottom of all our hearts, uh, we really wanted to express our gratitude to you and to wish you well uh, as you start your training to become a priest. Martin, for inviting me to speak to you today. And also for the support and guidance that he's given me over the last eight years. Gentle nudges in the right direction which as I look back, have made a significant contribution to my sense of calling and vocation. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Butler, and I am a member of the PCC. I sing in the choir and ring the bells at Holy Trinity and teach music at Holy Trinity Primary School. In September, I will be leaving Dartford and moving to Westcott House in Cambridge to begin a three-year course training for ordination. I'd like to thank the many of you who've offered prayers for me over the past 18 months or so whilst I was preparing for my Bishop's Advisory Panel. Knowing that I've been prayed for and supported by my church family gave me the added strength to keep going with what was a challenging and draining process. And as I leave here to spend the next few years as a student, I will need those prayers all the more. When I first arrived in Dartford in September 2012, I never imagined that eight years later I'd still be at Holy Trinity. I'd just started studying at Music College in Greenwich, and singing at Holy Trinity was something to do of a Sunday, and I was only supposed to be here for one year. But something kept me here. Something that for much of my time here, I was never able to understand let alone explain to the many people who have asked, why are you still singing at Dartford? It took me a number of years to tune in to the fact that God was calling me. 
And when I started to understand that call, I tried to pretend that it wasn't there, because it wasn't what I'd planned for my future. Training to become a priest involves hard work and sacrificing some parts of everyday life. And I was afraid that I'm not good enough a person to do it. The list of reasons for me to ignore that call was so long. The thing is, the more I tried to ignore it, the louder it became. When I learned that the reading for this morning was about Jacob's dream, I had to look up and smile at God, because there is so much in that reading that seems to make sense of my experience of being called. The ladder we hear about in the dream, with angels of God ascending and descending, is probably not like the step ladder that comes straight to my mind today. Particularly that tall wooden ladder that I've clambered up and down many times at Holy Trinity. Most likely, it would have been a tall structure familiar to the people of Jacob's day, perhaps reminiscent of the Tower of Babel. But for me, what's striking is that this connection between earth and heaven was constructed by God, not people. The Lord himself comes down to the ground to meet Jacob and stands beside him, offering a promise of love and protection wherever he goes. It is not the vain efforts of humankind trying to build up to the lofty heights of heaven. After his dream, Jacob is suddenly aware of the presence of God. How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And he goes on to make a vow of dedication to God, eyes opened and assured that God's promises will be fulfilled. It does not seem like Jacob was a kind or nice person before he encountered God at the ladder. Having conned his older brother Esau out of his birthright, he adds insult to injury when he disguises himself as his older brother to receive his father's blessing. Esau is furious when he finds out and wants to kill Jacob. Our reading starts just after this hair-raising ordeal with Jacob journeying far away from his brother's justifiable rage. Jacob is on the run, turning his back on his home and heading off into the unknown. And although he takes with him his father's blessing, it's God's blessing that he encounters on the way. What I see in Jacob's dream is that God does not call us to work our way up to him. We can never hope to reach his heights of holiness and goodness. But instead, what I learn is it is God who comes down to meet Jacob and us and reveals himself to us. I see that link between earth and heaven through which angels ascend and descend most fully realised in the person of Jesus Christ, God's own Son. I am the gate, Jesus said. I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So I think that this ladder can be seen perhaps as a foreshadowing of the even greater love yet to be displayed by God. As I leave the family at Holy Trinity, I take with me lots of happy memories, including occasions where I have truly seen God working in and through those around me. I started to make a list of people I wanted to thank individually, but it went on so long that I think it's just easier to thank everyone for the support they have given me over my time here, be it advice, concern or encouragement. And in these eight years, I have always felt I was at home here. And yes, I have truly encountered God in Dartford. Thinking about this reading also reminded me of the words of Psalm 139. 
And I wanted to share with you a few verses of this psalm because I think they resonate with my own feelings today. And I hope that they bring you comfort and insight as well. O Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You have known my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You mark out my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word on my tongue, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You encompass me behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me, so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go then from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you are there also. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, your right hand hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, even the darkness is no darkness with you. The night is as clear as the day. Darkness and light to you are both alike. Search me out, O God, and know my heart. Try me and examine my thoughts. See if there is any way of wickedness in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Thank you, James. And um, I just wanted to comment on the beautiful way that you had arranged um, the background for the presentation, uh, the matching colours. Uh, it, it felt very calm and, and very peaceful, and there was a great deal of care of attention so we could focus on your words. And the care that you took uh, with how the background presented was also mirrored in the way that you carefully researched the background into the material that you shared with us. So uh, I'm truly grateful and I think everybody's now got a really fair idea of what they're getting as you journey into becoming a priest. Um, Next up is uh, a reflection piece, and it's got a special message in it for you. And if we listen carefully enough, we'll understand that it's also got a special message for us. Thanks, Lucy and Adam. Uh, Rutter's always a, a favourite amongst our lot. And um, Adam's going to now lead our prayers. 
Let us pray. We give you thanks for all who have served this church faithfully in prayer, song and work. And for the many in this church who have heard the call to serve you faithfully in pastures new. We ask for God's blessing on James as he begins his preparations for priesthood. And we ask for your blessing on ourselves as each and every one of us hears and attends to our call to work and serve you in this world. Amen. We pray for the worldwide church, that the faithful may do your will. May your church be vulnerable, that it may speak with calm humility. Make it be outward-looking, that it may care deeply. May it be a community of peacemakers and bridge-builders. And in the midst of turbulence, let the church make space for the hearing of your still, small voice. Amen. Let us pray for the departed and those in grief. The souls of the just are in the hands of God, and no torment shall touch them. In the eyes of the foolish they appear to be dead. Their departure was reckoned as defeat, and their going from us as disaster. But they are at peace. For though in the sight of men they may be punished, they have a sure hope of immortality. Amen. Thank you, Adam. And now we have a, a hymn which we've chosen uh, again with this uh, theme in mind of thanking James and appreciating his ministry and anticipating what's ahead for you. Thank you. Now we come to our five minutes silence towards the end of the service and this time we're using uh, the icon uh, that we have on our prayer stand and uh, next week we hope to have a different piece of music underscoring it which Adam I think is going to carefully play on the organ 
but uh, let's use these five minutes of silence uh, reflectively and purposefully to discern God's call upon us.
So that's the end of our worship for this week. I hope you've enjoyed it and that you will join us again next week and to take us out uh, an organ voluntary from Adam. God bless. <laughs>